<laughs> Hi. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, or, you know, or me. <laughs> I'm so happy to be back. That was a fantastic trip. I will be dispensing little bits of wisdom uh, gained uh, from the trip, but just, I mean, it was a pilgrimage. Uh, it was a tarot pilgrimage trip I took. My The person who taught me, Jean Fiorini, uh, was the leader, one of the leaders of the trip. Um, Candy, oh my God, that was just such a fantastic, fantastic grounding experience. Um, especially going through the full moon in Aries there was really powerful. We went to places like Glastonbury. We didn't get out to Cromwell because the weather was so terrible out there. But man, it was beautiful in London. So we spent a day there, which we didn't expect to do. I was just floored by that place. And just the uh, time of being out of the country and sort of being in a space different was really uh, very very um sort of jarred some things loose for me and you know gave me a sense of like and i apologize for not doing more uh, empress club readings during the trip but i will say this to you i feel like that was on purpose even though i didn't mean it to be on purpose i feel like not doing the readings every day gave me um a little space in the connection for myself to be able to um see some things in a bigger picture I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I feel about what went on and how it was. And, and I will say this to you as the only, uh, well, as you probably know, I'm an extrovert or uh, some variation of an extrovert, extrovert, and I was the only one on the trip. So it is a little, it was a little weird for me to be quiet, but it was great. I thought that was so freeing to me that not have to entertain while I'm doing that. So I brought this deck, my favorite deck, my Barbara Moore, Shh, I love you guys too, but uh, the Barbara Moore deck I took with me all over England. I did readings. We did little uh, self-expression kinds of self, you know, reflection kind of games and tarot exercises. Really uh, very, very powerful to me. So I'm gonna do a reading this morning and let's see what comes up because the feeling of being in this space of, and I want to get this all out. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I have the whole thing. It's like Maya Angelou who pulled that poem in backwards. That's how I sort of feel like what I did with this feeling during the uh, April, April, Aries full moon. I felt like I was pulling in this idea of, wait a second. You're making 3D decisions you're, you're expecting to have something fully baked when there's process that needs to still be unfurled. <laughs> unfurled like a flag, right? There, there's still process that needs to happen. And so I guess what I'm saying to you is there's something in the message of you don't have enough information yet. And I mean that spiritually. I mean that on the, on the higher planes. I mean that in, in a lot of ways. There's something here about not having enough information about what's going on in the connection, about what is um, unfolding, about uh, someone else's 3D capability. I don't think you have enough information yet. I'm just going to put that out there because that resonated with me and I wanted to see how you guys felt about it. But let's do, I also, um, one of the things that was so cool about hanging out with Jean for a while is she wrote a book, and I'm going to recommend it to you. I'll put it in the Empress Club. She wrote a book about spreads. And as I'm doing the tarot classes, I'm going to be talking more about spreads this week in our Monday class, which is our final 101 class. Those who want to continue, we're going to keep continuing on this road here in 201. You can uh, sign up for 201 if you like. The link is below. So... What we're talking about is moving away from, first of all, in the tarot class, moving away from the basics of knowledge around the cards, basics of understanding of definitions. And now we're moving into how you ask questions, how you look at reversals, how you look at court cards when they come up. Like, are they me? Are they somebody else? How you sort of un unpack this, how you sort of pull back the onion on tarot readings and really start to 
instead of it being like, because if you're, <laughs> she said this to me, because I said, somebody, there's a lot of people who really want specific answer. And she said to me, well, maybe tarot is not the tool for you if you're looking for a specific answer. Because part of the answer is you. Part of the answer is your own resonance with the cards. Okay? And for, empress, for empresses in this twin flame journey, part of... We can all see the same reading and pull different things from it based on our own resonance, based on if I say something that resonates with you, that's a message for you. Somebody else might find something else in, in the reading. So it's sort of like pulling away from the I must have, I have to do, I whatever, and being aware of your own process of how you're unfolding this in your life and not having it be such a 3D experience all the time of like, I must make a decision, I must go this certain way and it's gotta look like this. But to a place of like, can I be in a place of a little more ambiguity about this in order to allow for more information to come in? Can I be in this space of like, well, I'm certainly, I feel at a crossroads, I feel ready to move forward, I feel union happening, yes, but that's not the end. That's the beginning, right? That's not the like, oh, you know, land on boardwalk, park place, you know, why win the game, right? As those of you who play Monopoly know, it never ends. That freaking game never ends. So it's kind of like this. It's like you're on a, in a stage, in a stage of decision making, in a stage of them coming to you, in a stage of them uh, opening up their own awareness about things in a stage, in a stage. All right, so let's see here. Guidance for our Empress group today. Yeah, no kidding, at a crossroads, feel that? Uh-huh, uh-huh, and underneath two of cups, right? That's definitely gotta come out. So there's this place of, wow. All right, I will show you this. This is really about what you want. There's the chariot. Boy, that showed up a lot. Um, this is about what you want. Okay, overarching energy of the reading. This is very, lots of cups here. Lots of awareness coming to the fore. Page of Wands. Very, very um, tentative in terms of an offer. So here's the top here. Ten of Cups, Five of Swords, Eight of Cups. If there's a sense that you're fantasizing too much over this connection, there can be a battle. This other person is a real human being. In addition to being a spiritual being, they are a real human being. So if there's fe this feeling that there's too much fantasy or not enough reality, like uh, I know my conversations about where where the connection is going has been a lot around like well you know something's gonna happen and it's gonna turn out and I'm just always like for real because I pretty much know that nothing happens without my co-creation with the universe and that's about making a decision about hey this is what I want I want to be with my twin I want to be at two of us not three of us right there's these decisions that are made and I feel like the this Five of Swords is coming after this Two of Swords. Two of Swords is sort of making it in a blind alley. Like you don't know what the other person wants. You don't know their own feelings. You know that they love you, right? That's what we do know. That's what's in, that's what's aware. And it's sort of like this belief in that everything will turn out beautifully and perfectly, but there's messiness here. There's a messiness to this. Okay, and then there's a real spiritual journey that is embarked upon. Wow, there's a real journey here. The next thing that goes down is this um, uh, judgment nine of cups. The sort of like, this is the wish granted to you. This is the wish that you have been hoping for. Some of you could have a choice to make. There's a new person coming in. If your if your divine masculine, your divine feminine, your divine partner, let's just say, is resistant to this, yes, they love you. Okay, that's not the issue. Okay, that's not really the issue. The issue is, will they make a decision 
to do something that upsets an apple cart of some kind, will they do that? And if they're not willing to do that, I feel like you walk away, okay? Walking away, this is the card I got. Jean is so cool. Her, her book of um, readings, the first thing is give it to me straight, one card, right? And so I did that for myself this morning about the twin journey, and I did get this card. I got the chariot, which to me, it feels like either direction you go, who said this? It was in a movie. Um, either direction you go, you're still going to get, it's like, I have been thinking for a long time, if I don't go toward my twin, I'm never going to have love in my life. And I just don't believe that's true anymore. Not after this trip, not after all the things that have been revealed to me. I just feel like if you're deciding to have love in your life, you're going to have love in your life. Okay. You're co-creating love in your life. Now, there's also a, another person here who gets to make decisions. Do they choose that? Are they feeling this is too much fantasy? There's some, some kind of thing like that. But either way you go, victory happens. So either, even if you choose to walk away from this because it's too, it, because it's not, that person has made a decision to not do this. If, if your person has made a decision not to do this, you will find love anyway. The universe will co-create for you the love on the level that you are resonating. So if you are resonating at your very highest level, that will come in. So you need to remove that from this situation. What are they really offering to you? Right, I love you. Is it not founded in, is it not a, um, a 3D kind of a thing? Like, look, I love you, but my parents need me now and I have, or my spouse is mentally ill or um, my business requires that I stay in a pr pr particular geographic location. Whatever it is, whatever the thing is that you foresee as the thing that needs to be overcome in order for them to prove their love to you or something like that. There's this thing of like, no, wait, I love you no matter what. Unconditional love. My 3D journey, choices I'm making on this journey for myself, the journey I'm making, this is your counterpart talking, may require other kinds of decisions that you may not see as the perfect solution or what you expected it to be. And so there's this moment in time when you go, do I, what do I do with that? Do I move forward with them and be, and not have, have them, but have them in a compromised way because of the decisions they have to make on their journey or they think they have to make, right? This is their journey too, right? They get their journey. It's not just about the twin connection. There may be union here. I feel like union. I feel like there is coming together. But again, that is not the end. It is the beginning. This person could come together with you physically, but there are other situations that need to be worked on and ironed out that have nothing to do with you or yours, nothing to do with them, that require decisions that may not unfold things in a way that you think it should look like. Okay? So there's this Ace of Cups. There could be somebody new coming in. Ace of Cups, Knight of Cups. Whereas you have your dream, you have this person, and yet is for some of you, for some of you, the twin is not the life partner. Okay, and that's the problem here. That's what I'm seeing here. The twin is not the life partner or is making choices to deviate from, yes, there's union. Yes, there's connection. Yes, there's mission. Yes, there's all these things. But what if they're not the life partner? What if, what if there, for some reason, is a different choice that they're making and you have been manifesting so strongly that there is union, but there is also another. There's also another. Eight, nine, ten of cups. A cycle completed. Ace two, a new cycle beginning. A new cycle beginning here. 
Five of Cups, Knight of Wands, Eight of Pentacles. So some loss being had, somebody who works well with you, somebody who is a lighter in energy, somebody who is, could be fire sign, could be water sign. Here I have two knights. Two knights here. Knight of, Knight of Wands, Knight of Cups. And that's causing some stress here. Somebody who you know through work or something along those lines or somebody that works can work with you. I get eights here. Eight is the, the, you know, sort of moving forward thing. And there's loss. There's fives, two fives. So this can be a situation where, yes, we come together. Is it for the long, is it for a 3D marriage? And if it's not, is that going to disappoint you? But you're still in union. You're still together. There's spiritual union. There's physical union. The chariot, you, f sheer force of will bringing this together. Oh, wow. Boy, it's like a 10 days of shh, right? It feels, <laughs> all right, uh, blocks right now, blocks that need to be overcome. Uh, there needs to be some conversation. Okay, page of swords, high priestess, that's a very mismatch. Somebody here is not talking at all, but it's, um, it's also the more powerful one could be you not talking at all. Powerful mismatch here. Needs to be more communication going on right now. Actions you can take. Well, King of Cups came out about feelings. All right, that's swords. This is swords, but High Priestess is moon. King of Cups, moon, uh, uh, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy here. Deeply hidden feelings. And then the chariot actually going toward the moon, using the moon and the stars as the guide, right? Judgment, a re revelatory statements. Things about, things need to come to a head here. Things need to come together as union. And then what? Then what? Okay, there's been a lot of unions already going on. There needs to be union. Then there needs to be, then it's, you know, sort of through that looking glass, okay? So actions to take. Two of Pentacles, deciding on traditional union is deciding on traditional relationship. Is this a relationship that can be consummated as a 3D kind of relationship or is this a spiritual relationship, high priestess, right? What is this? So let's talk to your divine partner. Wow, this is a lot. I didn't expect all this. Okay, what is, let's talk to their higher self, divine partner here. Five of wands, they're struggling. They're struggling. I feel like there's a lot of people in their decision-making process. Because look, you've got a family here. You've got a family here. Is it over? Is the family life, if they're in a third party, I mean, if they're committed to someone, is that over? Ten to the one? For some of you, it's not a new person. For some of you, they are leaving a family. They are leaving a marriage situation. There's going to be sex that happens with combined with the love that is revelatory to them. They're like, wow, maybe there was, maybe this, this uh, union creates a crack in all of what they're thinking. And they got, they're like, I need some time to think. Okay, there's some real cracks in the infrastructure here. Um, for some of you, it's not a new person coming in. It's a crack to their own 3D kind of experience. Will they choose to make this a 3D uh, relationship? Will they choose to make this a timeline, earth timeline, traditional marriage type of situation? Okay, so they're struggling with that five of wands here. We got three fives, king of pentacles. This is about money. This is about stability for them. That's what we're talking about here, stability. They have a stable situation. It may not be a loving situation, but it's stable, right? Yes, that's right. They may have a, they have a stable situation, but it may not be loving. It's definitely not in comparison to you, okay? Definitely not in comparison to you. So let's see one more from your divine partner here. Let's see. 
hanged man. Did I get another? I thought I got another flip. Yeah, okay. So they're sacrificing something. There's another family. They're sacrificing something here for to be with you. There's it's likely they are going to for those of you who are in that are in relation or your partners in relationships with somebody because it's about stability. That is likely going to be sacrificed. For those of you who are in partnership or in a twin flame connection to somebody who has young children or there it was about love for them or it was about some kind of karmic situation where they needed to have that like they need to be in that family setting they might be making sacrifice they might feel like that this is a sacrifice for them to go with you wow I feel like after they think about it, they're going to off make an offer, okay? After they think about it, there's going to be this boom, this union, connection, togetherness. That's going to move you into another spot. Unfolding here. Death, transformation of this. Wow. Big transformation. They've been sacrificing themselves. Four of Swords, they need some healing time. Don't be surprised if they, after union, they need some healing time here. Where are we going? Knight of Swords. They're going to be, they might be sharp about this to you. Hold on one second. Let me see one more about this. Queen of Swords, Four of Cups, Wheel. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. So I feel like you're going to be, they're going to have to go through this death and transformation and healing in which they'll go away from you. Eight of cups. They're going to go away from you after this altercation, like this big physical connection happens. It creates this boom. Like, yes, I want to be with this person. I don't know what I can do about where I am. So there's this transformation of healing. And then they're like, now it's a real like swords, festival here. There's a real like, you know what you want. They're moving, they're making moves. They're feeling like it's fast. So they might sit in this four of cups, four of swords energy, and then the universe will move them forward. Ace of pentacles. And the universe will offer something. This is going to be coming from outside of you. This is not just, this is not you. You create union and then all of this stuff is going to tumble out. Okay? Everything I've just said here is going to tumble out. They're going to need some real time to absorb this. This is going to feel uh, monumental to them, transformative to them. They're not going to have expected this in many ways. Some of you already in union are experiencing this. This could have happened a couple weeks ago. All right. Wedding. Hold, please. Let your friends help you. Ask for accept support from others. This situation involves marriage, soulmate. You deserve love. So, okay, so I watched this stupid movie on the way home on the airplane. It's a really dumb movie. I love Diane Keaton. I love Candace Bergen. I love um, Steen Bergen, Mary Steen Bergen. I love, who's the other, Jane Fonda. I love all them. The movie was kind of dumb. It was these six women in their 60s. I think Jane Fonda is freaking 80, okay? She's amazing in this book. She looks amazing. Um, but all of these women, you know, various states of, one of them's married for 35 years. The other one never got married. Then there was like um, somebody whose husband died. Then there was one, somebody whose career took over, right? It was all these different things. And Diane Keaton's character is Andy Garcia is her guy. I'm just like, ah, Andy Garcia is still hot to me. Even in his 60s, I don't care. Or what, however old he is, I think Andy Garcia is phenomenal. Okay. So her kids catch up with her. She's in love with him. They're having this lovely weekend. Her kids catch up with them to be like, mother, what are you doing? And she like runs away like, you don't understand. You don't have kids. I've got to take care of them. And he's like, what? They're like 30. What are you talking about? You deserve happiness. And she's so like 
intractably, she sells her house and moves in the basement, right? Like stupid, stupid, stupid. And because she's so still in this old place, she hasn't really, she's more into her life. She doesn't want to let go of it. And he says to her, you deserve to be happy regardless of what these other people think. And I feel like that really strongly, like in this situation of like, I see you sort of shaking them, like you deserve to be happy. And they're sort of letting all these other people sort of dictate what's going on with them. And they kind of have to walk out into the, into the desert for a while and get their bearings here because you're basically have, sh you're shaking something to the foundation for them. I'm not sure. It could be the sex part. It could be just the being with you, the sort of Kundalini part of this. This could be this real explosion of, I don't see the tower here, but I do see uh, judgment after being closed off. I do see death here after, you know, ha having been given this new information that is like this powerful connection with you. For some of you who have never even kissed your twin flame or whatever that is, like there's this powerful rush coming. For those of you in union, there's some moment of that's going to clash with their 3D experience. And they're going to need time. Or you're going to need time. One of you is going to really need time here. This is your soulmate. This is about, is it, is it a 3D experience or is it purely a spiritual union connectedness? What are we making here? And I do feel like the universe is saying to you, they're going to move it in the direction of a physical thing. Uh, Ace of Pentacles is a physical thing. Wheel is a physical thing, right? Wheel of Fortune, physical. So the, it's like the universe is going to offer you the physical. After you go through a physical connection here, after you go through a 3D experience here, and some really hard Five of Cups, Five of Swords, Five of Wands, I don't see five pentacles here, uh, but the hierophant is here. Some re and uh, hanged man of being, um, ha uh, you know, sacrificing oneself. One of you has really sacrificed themselves, or maybe both of you have. For some of you, it's a really small percentage of you. There's a new person on the scene that is causing this. Like if the both of you are single, there's like a new person on the scene that's causing this. Right? It's like the record. So. This is your soulmate. We know that, right? Twin flame reading. But there is something about the letting other people help you, letting other, letting somebody, because if you've been this way and really not talking about it, like you or your twin has been really not saying anything, and then it sort of blows up on you in a physical way, or there's some physical connection that then it blows up, right? It's like you're having sex and they burst into tears, or you burst into tears. There's something there. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is, this is enough for today. Um, so this is Sept uh, September 28th. We're getting towards the end of September guys. And, um, this end of this year is going to be very powerful. Uh, I feel like you're going to get a lot of stuff on your plate. This is incredibly tense, intense energy now. I'll see you tomorrow.